Welcome to my new video of uh, eco evaluation of pulmonary arterial hypertension. So, what is the definition of pulmonary arterial hypertension? If your mean pulmonary arterial pressure is more than 20 mm of Hg at rest and you should be assessed by the right heart catheterization, then that is called pulmonary arterial hypertension. So, earlier definition was mean pulmonary artery pressure more than 25. Now it has reduced to the 20 mm of Hg. So, as you all know, there is a WHO classification of pulmonary hypertension and uh, they have divided into the five groups and the first group is uh, idiopathic pulmonary hypertension second group is pulmonary hypertension secondary to the cardiac cause third uh, is the pulmonary hypertension secondary to the respiratory cause and the fourth group is chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension and the fifth group is unknown cause so how to evaluate uh, the pulmonary arterial hypertension so you can evaluate it from the ecg chest x-ray abg and pulmonary function test so we are dealing with the eco evaluation of uh, uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension so we'll discuss about the eco findings of the pulmonary arterial hypertension so coming to the 2d eco uh, cardiographic signs in the pulmonary hypertension so grossly we have to evaluate the pulmonary artery then uh, ventricles and especially right ventricles then ivc and then uh, right atrium so grossly if uh, you can see the more than two or three echocardiographical signs of the pulmonary arterial hypertension then we can label it as a pulmonary arterial hypertension so let's see what are the echocardiographical uh, signs of uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension so coming to the parasol long axis view if you see normally you can see the mass of rv is less than the one sixth and its diameter is less than one third of lv but then in uh, ph uh, you can see the rv free wall is hypertrophic and the cavity may be dilated so from the plaques view also you can come to know the changes of pulmonary hypertension so coming to the next view and this is a modified uh, plaques view and this is called the rv inflow view in which you can see the ra and the track speed wall so so here you can see the in if it is ph then you can see the rv apex is hypertrophic and the cavity is dilated and basal diameter of uh, rv um, should be more than 40 uh, or uh, 54 mm again you can see the tracker speed annular diameter in this and uh, you can assess the tracker speed wall apparatus in this and how to form this view uh, you have to slightly tilt your uh, probe uh, downwards to make this uh, rv inflow view this is called modified uh, plaques view and uh, and uh, now coming to the uh, the modified plaques rv outflow view in which uh, you can see the pulmonary artery uh, LV, IVS and the RV. So normal RV outflow track dimension uh, is uh, 17 to 24 mm, uh, mm in the diastole and uh, in pH pulmonary artery will be dilated. Uh, generally it is uh, more than uh, 28. It has to uh, it has to measure with the body surface area and uh, normal uh, RPA is uh, 7 to 17 mm and the LPA is uh, 6 to 14 mm. Now, if you come to the parasol short axis view, uh, there you can see the D-shaped uh, LV cavity. In volume overload situation, there will be a septal bulge occurs in the diastole. And in pressure overload condition, that occurs in the systole uh, plus minus in diastole. So, in pH, uh, you will see the crescent shape of uh, RV and uh, septal flattening due to uh, during the systole and diastole. So, now if we come to the opacal four chamber view, uh, you will see the RV hypertrophy. Uh, there will be dilatation and the RV free wall is the first to become the hypertrophic. So, systolic dysfunction and the lowest tissue myocardial velocity. So, apex is a frequently hypertrophic and the akinetic. So, RV wall thickness will be more than uh, 5 mm, mm and uh, there will be a RVH and usually secondary to the increase the RVSP. So, generally there will be a RV dilatation and uh, the Diameter at the base of the RV uh, will be more than 42 mm, mm. At mid level, it should be it will be 35 more than, and longitudinally it will be more than 86. So now coming to the RVOT diameter, the proximal RVOT diameter. So it will increase definitely, but the most important is the distal RVOT diameter. So this proximal RVOT diameter you can see in the this view, plax view and uh, short axis view also. So coming to the uh, distal RVOT diameter so this we can see the RVOT distal diameter and it should be measured just below the pulmonary wall and it is most uh, reproducible and if it is more than 27 uh, mm, mm 
uh, then RVOT is the dilated. So it is a most uh, reproducible uh, diameter. So coming to the RA, so RA dilatation. So it is it should be estimated from the four chamber view, and the upper limit for the major axis dimension of the RA is a 53 mm, and the minor axis is uh, 44 mm. And uh, if the RA area is more than 18 centimeters square at the end ventricular ventricular systole, then that is the RA dilatation. So in that case, we can consider the RA is dilated, and that is the one of the signs of the pulmonary arterial hypertension. So coming to the next parameter is the LV eccentricity index. So the degree of distortion of LV and the IVS arising due to increased pressure in the RV during the diastole and systole and that can be quantified using the short axis view at the level of left ventricular papillary muscles. So LV eccentricity index is the ratio between the LV anteroposterior dimension that is D2 in the shown uh, image and the septolateral dimension that is D1. So if the ratio is more than 1 that will suggest the RV overload. So now coming to the pressure measurement in the pH, so uh, uh, we can do it it's, uh, by the TR peak velocity. So we will come to know the PASP by TR peak velocity. So here in this image you can see the TR maximum uh, pressure gradient is 27 and uh, TR uh, Vmax is 2.64. So if this uh, TR uh, peak velocity is uh, less than 2.8, or not measurable then there is a low probability of pulmonary hypertension but if it is uh, more than 2.9 uh, to 3.4 then there will be a uh, high probability of pulmonary hypertension and if it is more than 3.4 there will be a very high probability of pulmonary arterial hypertension so here uh, we will get the RV systolic pressure uh, is equal to 4 uh, V square that is TR velocity plus the right atrial pressure so now how will you get the right atrial pressure so how will you assess the right atrial pressure so from the IVC diameter and respiratory collapse we can assess the RV uh, RA pressure so if the IVC diameter is less than 2.1 centimeter and there will be a more than 50 percent of respiratory collapse then the RA pressure would be a 0 to 5 mm of Hg and if it is uh, uh, IVC diameter is less than 2.1 and the respiratory collapse is less than 50 percent then uh, that would be a uh, RA pressure would be a 5 to 10 mm of Hg and if the IVC diameter is more than uh, 2.1 centimeter and uh, less than 50 percent of respiratory collapse then RA pressure would be a more than 15 mm of Hg and uh, we have the secondary measures of RA pressures also if there is a restrictive filling that means the tricuspid E by A is more than 2.1 with a distillation time of less than 120 millisecond secondly the tricuspid E by E prime is if it is more than 6 then the thirdly di diastolic flow predominance in the hepatic vein so uh, that will give the systolic filling fractions of less than 55 per so now coming to the measurement of uh, pulmonary arterial pressure by the PR spectrum so this is a PR spectrum you can see and uh, you can see the peak uh, uh, early diastolic velocity of PR that will give you the mean uh, pulmonary arterial pressure if you add the right arterial pressure in that and the end diastolic velocity of PR uh, that will give you the pulmonary end diastolic pressure. So with the help of PR signal also you can calculate the mean arterial pulmonary pressure uh, with this uh, formulas. So now uh, let's move on to the next parameter that is uh, mean pulmonary arterial pressure from the RVOT acceleration time. So as the PA pressure increases, resistance to the blood flow from the RV into the pulmonary artery is increases. So resulting into the shortening of RVOT acceleration time. And then here you can see the mid systolic notching also in case of pH when there will be a rapid rise to peak shorter acceleration time and there will be a mid systolic uh, notching uh, in this uh, spectrum you can see. Simply if you see the value of uh, RVOT uh, acceleration time is more than 130 milliseconds then that is normal and if it is less than 100 milliseconds then that is pulmonary arterial hypertension. So now coming to the next parameter that is mean uh, pulmonary arterial uh, pressure from the TR uh, velocity time integral. So uh, simply we have to make velocity time integral of the TR spectrum by putting the CW Doppler of the TRZ at uh, at uh, and you have to trace that so uh, now coming to the next parameter uh, that is right ventricular uh, isovolumetric 
will make a relaxation time that is IVRT so it is uh, uh, obtained by uh, TDI and it has to be deployed at the lateral tricuspid annulus and you will get this spectrum and you can calculate the IVRT from this spectrum that is you have to measure from the offset of S prime wave to the onset of E prime uh, wave so simply if the IVRT is more than 75 um, uh, millisecond then it is reliably it reliably predicts the pulmonary hypertension and if the IVRT is less than 40 millisecond then there will be a high negative predictive value for the uh, P. The pitfall about this is uh, the it is unreliable in the HCM and uh, RBVB and the RV dysfunction. So when the heart rate is too high uh, corrected IVRT should be used. So in this way uh, we will come to know the pulmonary arterial hypertension from the eco uh echocardiographic signs in the so basically you have to see the rv and then pulmonary artery and uh, then the ra uh, and this uh, uh, and if if you're getting uh, any uh, two or three signs of pulmonary arterial hypertension in the eco then you can label it as a uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension